Today, on The Initially Don, I am honored to present to you the world's first self-built OPSL laser pointer, and what could be the world's first OPSL laser pointer in general. I looked on Google, and I could not find another one. Instead of being a direct diode or DPSS diode pump solid state, this uses a miniature 530 nanometer optically pumped solid state laser. There will be more on how it works after the build process, but man, it is beautiful. This laser head is small compared to some other miniaturized things such as a stepper motor, DC motor, full color display, and hard drive. This thing is tiny, and here's a penny for comparison. And if you think it looks cool now, just wait till you see what it looks like with the cover taken off. Let's get on to the build process. This is a custom build that uses three sections of brass tubing, the smallest with an ID of 11 millimeters. First, to make sure the OPSL laser head will fit into the smallest tube's center. These two aluminum parts will be formed into the OPSL laser module housing inside of the laser pointer. To ensure the two parts won't come apart on the lathe, they will be secured with a pair of screws and nuts. With the two pieces secured, it's time to lock them into the center of the lathe chuck and spin them down to about 12 millimeters. At the point they reach 12mm wide, I will saw off the extra so I can check how it fits in the 11mm brass tube. As soon as the parts fit well, I will cut off the two round halves I need from the rest of the aluminum. The bottom half will be the OPSL mounting base and needs to be marked out. Using a Dremel, I'll cut away most of the unwanted aluminum. The bolt of water is to keep the part cool in my hand as I work with it, otherwise it gets pretty hot to hold. Using two hardened pins for guides, I can now finish the bottom with a very flat surface, ensuring good thermal conduction from the OPSL laser head to the rest of the laser pointer case. Since this laser is not collimated, I'll need to add an 8mm threaded tube section with a collimating lens in the front. A small pilot hole is first drilled in the front center and then larger bits will be used to make the hole wider. The final hole I want is 8mm wide and 3mm deep. I'm also using a flashlight to compare depth during this.
The upper portion of the aluminum will be for the OPSL viewing window mount. Three holes are drilled into the upper portion. This is so I can fit the metal files in where I need them. On to some of the most tedious metal filing I have ever done on a project. An infrared filtering glass cover will be glued onto this piece later on in the video. During this step, I felt like Michelangelo looking for David in a stone. Using two foam back sections of sandpaper, I can make two even score lines on the side of the tube. There will be two holes cut in the largest tubing and one hole cut in the smallest. During this, I have also left in the medium sized tube between the two others to prevent rolled edges during filing. Upon checking the fit with the two aluminum pieces, it's time to form the rough shape of the viewing window cover from the medium tube. A little tab has been left on the door cover. This will be made into a latching hook for the cover lock. A small ring is then cut and formed from the medium brass tubing. This will be soldered onto the outside of the smallest tube as an upper cover door stop. The ring is then soldered on using a heat gun. Afterwards, another portion of medium tubing is then cut and formed into the lower door lock with a hook to match. Comparisons between all the parts are made and then the lower door stop is soldered on to the smallest tube. During the formation, many checks on all the parts were made to ensure proper function of the door. After completing the OPSL viewing door cover, I made a notch on the top. This is where I will drill a hole for the retaining pin. The retaining pin will hold the two aluminum mounts together, as well as lock in the position in the laser pointer's case. The remaining portion on the back of the aluminum glass mount is removed. This is to provide clearance for the switch later on. 
Since most of the work for the optics is done, it was time to mark out the room needed for the laser's driver and battery. Then I cut away a path into the inner chassis. This will allow the outside button to have clearance during final assembly. The entire inner assembly was finished. Time to compare it against the outside tubing and cut it to final length. With all the measurements made for the driver and battery, I cut off the extra brass tubing on the inner chassis. Using the aluminum mounts, I can compare how they fit in the case and mark out the location I need to drill in the outer case for a push button. Everything on the outer case was pretty much done. All that was left was cleaning up before polishing and gold plating. I liked how the latching door cover worked. I thought to duplicate the mechanism from two additional sections of medium brass tubing for the battery access on the rear of the laser pointer. One of the two portions will be soldered onto the inner tube, much like the viewing door's retaining rings. Once soldered in place, I cut away the area that would otherwise block the switch's assembly path. This second piece of medium brass tubing, it will serve as part of the battery's access assembly. To make this part fit properly, I have to match it up against the inner locking piece soldered onto the inner chassis. After both locks for the battery access assembly fit securely, it was time to compare it to the outside housing and cut it to proper length to match. An 11mm wide brass disc and spring are then soldered onto the bottom completing the battery access assembly. A small portion of the inner chassis can now be removed, providing room for the front dichroic glass window to be installed in the front of the laser pointer later. With the entire assembly, minus button, and front glass unit made, I moved on to installing the battery connections. After marking out the space I needed for the laser driver, I cut a disc out from a dual layer PCB. One side I will remove the copper from the outside, leaving a place for a positive battery contact. 
On the other side of the PCB, I then remove the copper in the middle, providing a ring of which I can solder onto the inside of the laser pointer chassis. Using a heat gun, I soldered the PCB into place. This is to become my battery's positive connection in the laser. After the solder cooled, I rechecked to make sure everything fit into the tube. Now that all the case parts were finished, I checked to make sure the laser driver fit in and then trimmed off the extra PCB. Everything fit perfectly on, so on to plating the door cover section of the laser pointer case. I chose to use the roll gold for the optical viewing window door cover, as it would make for a nice contrast to the gold I intended to use for the rest of the outside. I chose to plate the battery door cover in rose gold as well. With the inner chassis fully complete, it was time to prepare the laser driver electronics. The little OPSL laser head has four wires to be soldered on, two for the pump diode and two for the heater. After soldering both sets of wires up, I hooked a modified green laser driver up to each for testing. One of the laser drivers will be set to 400 milliamps. This will be installed in the laser pointer with the pump diode. Later on, the second driver will be replaced with another circuit for the heater. Once I got light from the OPSL laser head, I then checked my collimating lens to see if it would work or need to be replaced, and it worked very well. Before mounting the laser head onto the aluminum block, two grooves for the wires needed to be cut. With the two wire grooves cut, it was time to glue in the collimating lens assembly and OPSL laser head into the aluminum mount.
Whenever I do any gluing on optics, I always keep good airflow to prevent frosting on glass. I also glued in the optical viewing window as well, since the next step would depend on this being in place. In order to install the OPSL laser head in the mounting assembly, the driver would need to be removed to run the wires through. After all the optics were set, I cleaned up any glue residue that may have accumulated around the edges. This was a moment I both feared and waited for. Removing the laser head case and mounting it into the laser pointer without damaging it. I could not believe how small the optics inside were. I'll show you them under a microscope later on. Once the laser head and assembly were mostly in the case, I found a pin and used it to keep the two halves in line while adjusting its position. To finalize the location and lock the laser head into place, I measured the pin against the level of the chassis and cut it to length and pressed it into the aluminum case. Please take a second and marvel at this. I sure did. Before installing the laser driver, I glued a small push button switch on the lower aluminum mount and let that set. With the button installed, I found a small gold plated contact of which would make for a good positive battery connection. So I trimmed it and then soldered that into position. At this point, I also soldered a wire on the positive battery connection for my laser driver. A small 3.3 volt fixed voltage regulator and 500 ohm potentiometer were added to the laser driver for the laser's heater. Finding spots for both of these was a little tricky.
here's what the modified laser driver looks like. As for most of my laser pointer builds, I tend to install a MOSFET for switching the main power from my batteries. I'll be doing the same in this one. The MOSFET source will connect to the battery's negative, its drain will connect to the laser driver's negative input, and the gate will be connected to one side of the push button switch. The last connection to be made is from the other side of the switch to the battery's positive connection, thus providing the MOSFET's gate with a positive turn-on signal. After installing the electronics, I did a little wire management to ensure they did not get caught while doing the final assembly. Now that the laser worked, it was time for a button on the outside. I found a brass gear and used the lathe to form a suitable button that fit the hole made in the laser pointer's outside case. Once the brass part matched the outside, I cut it from the gear. Making the button is a game of too much and too little, as I filed too much and had to add solder onto the bottom. When the button was fully formed, I also plated that in rose gold as well. After polishing the outside of the laser pointer case, I took out the gold solution and plated the outside in plain gold. Everything looked amazing. It was time to finalize the height of the button and put the fully built core into the outer case. Only one last part needed to be made. This was the front IR filter cover for the laser pointer. For this I found and drilled out a brass connector from a motor. I placed a piece of brass in a section of wide tubing and shortened it in the lathe. Unfortunately my camera memory filled up during this. Here is what the part looked like after trimming. Then I sanded, polished and plated it in rose gold.
the very last step in the build at last, gluing in the Decroyac glass IR filter, letting it set and installing it in the front of the laser pointer. After finishing this build, I could barely believe what I was holding in my own hands even though I built it. This thing is one of the most beautiful and intriguing complicated things I've ever put together. Let's take a look at this under the microscope. Inside of the laser head there are a few parts starting with the pump dial that emits IR light at around 808 nanometers directly after seems to be a fact lens or reflector. From there, the beam is condensed through a set of lenses called the Twin Aspheric Lens Assembly. The condensed beam is then bounced off a reflector and up into a birefringent filter. The birefringent filter helps lock in a single frequency of light. That light is then bounced off this part which serves two functions, the first of which is directing the 808 nanometer laser light through onto the oscillating crystal. The oscillating crystal is lithium niobate and is mounted on a small positive temperature coefficient heater for tuning reasons. The last part is the OPS chip and acts as a tunable gain medium and converts 808 nanometer light into 1060 nanometer light. When the laser first fires up on camera, you can see a little bit of the IR from the pump diode. You can also see the secondary function of the one reflective optic as it serves the function of also steering the 530 nanometer light out and forward to the expanding lens. You can also see the 530 nanometer light generated inside of the oscillating crystal. In contrast to my 5 milliwatt 510 nanometer direct diode laser, the beam is much thinner and brighter. And against my 50-ish milliwatt 532 nanometer DPSS, the beam looks equally as good. The only downsides of this laser are its warm up time and the collimating lens being slightly off to one side. I hope you all enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making the laser. And here are some pictures of the final laser after it was fully put together. I'll continue posting up videos about lasers, optics, and other technologies. So as always, stay tuned for more.